Yeah, it's in the Western Derby. Um, what, what do you say to the guys ahead of this one? The final's still alive. Uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to the RAC um, Derby. Uh, it's a big game um, for all our fans. It's big. Uh, you know, it's obviously our home game. So, uh, <clears throat> really, we've just spoken about getting back to playing our footy. And I think um, the contrast between the Richmond game and the Brisbane game was quite stark. And um, we want to try and recapture some of that rich, uh, the, some of the form against Richmond. Um, so, yeah, we've tried to hone in on a few areas this week um, that allow us to do that. What was it that changed for most of the games? I thought the basis of our contest and, and pressure uh, fell away. Uh, and, um, you know, rich, uh, Brisbane are a really mature side. And I felt like um, once we missed one tackle, it, we just allowed them on the outside and um, we weren't able to stop them from there. So um, it's been a bit of an issue for us all year, our tackling. Um, yeah, we need to keep continuing to improve on that. Um, and we just got scored against far too easily, especially in our back half. Um, you know, they, they scored um, you know, nearly 70 points from stoppage, which you know, is by far our worst effort of the year. When you talk about tackling, I think you guys played the second least tackles of the year and had the second, second lowest conversion of tackles completed. How do you address that? Uh, yeah, we're looking at all aspects of our tackling. Um, you know, our, our pressure in our front half versus what it, teams bring in our back, half, back 50 um, is, is, is stark. So we need to set the ground up to allow our forwards to pressure more. Um, you know, some of it's personnel. personnel and um, age of our group, well, we're missing some you know, easy tackles um, where it's just a strength v strength battle. So um, we need to you know, make sure we um, get our young players in the gym um, and tackling with the right um, intent. And um, I will continue to look at the way we play. Um, we haven't played in um, high pressure games, so to speak. Um, and, now, on the flip side, we force the opposition to miss a lot of tackles as well when we're playing well. So, um, you know, as much as people look at tackling numbers and think it's one thing, it's a lot goes into it. So we'll continue to do, um, yeah, continue to improve in all those areas. The equation for you guys is pretty simple with finals. It's going to happen. I mean, do you sort of you talk about playing in high pressure games? I mean, have you put it to the guys that hey, we are playing finals from here on in? Uh, probably not. Probably not. <clears throat> um, that bluntly, um, I think our players understand what's on the line um, and they understand what derbies are all about and they understand the intensity that the game's going to be at on the weekend. So we'll continue to prepare our players the best, of, the best we can um, for what to expect on the weekend. And um, yeah, you know, part of that is to understand the intensity that, of derbies and um, yeah, our, our players. Our players know what's on the line. Um, there's no more losing if we want to play finals, so we just got to bring our best. In terms of preparing for an opponent, are the Eagles any less imposing than they have been last <coughs> Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, you, know, you only have to look at our derby record to, um, to understand the respect they need to be given. And, um, <coughs> you know, even though they've had some ups and downs this year, their good footy's really good, so we always look at opposition's best um, and prepare for that. Um, yeah, so we'll, you, know, you just have to look at the names they've got on, on the paper. So, um, yeah, we will prepare for them at their best. Yes, the derby record, Justin, is, is ammunition with the players, the motivation in any way? Oh, a little bit, a little bit. It's, yeah, but um, you know, really, it's all those sort of things are external. So we just need to make sure we, our players are really um, prepared for the process they need to execute. Um, you know, finals talk's great, and um, we, we're in a great position, um, or we're in a, in, a, in a better position than last year when it comes to finals, um, derby, derby um, record. It's all external stuff that, once the ball's bounced, doesn't really help. So um, yeah, it might add a little bit of motivation, but really we just need to prepare our players for what they need to execute. How close were you halfway through to appealing Andrew Brayshaw's um, one match? Oh, it's something we definitely looked at. It's just, um, you know, there wasn't really grounds in the rules to uh, challenge it and, or appeal it. So um, once the, the lawyers say there's no real grounds, you've just got to cop the penalty on the chin and move on. And how do you prepare for Sunday without him? Have you got a debutant for us? Uh, no, we haven't had selection yet. 
Um, there will be a number of players coming to the mix. Um, you know, Switters, Sam Srubskowski's um, back from injury. Banfield's back from injury. Um, we ob obviously have to replace Wilson as well. So, yeah, selection might be a bit trickier this week. At this point, is Andy in the essentially the tribunal didn't believe in certain events and how's he back to that? He's disappointed. We're disappointed. Um, but we think we've got a fair hearing and we just have to move on. Like, um, yeah, we're disappointed as a footy club. We won't have one of our most informed players. But, yeah, it's not much we can do about it now. It's as simple as getting that insurance and sort of move into that inside role a little bit more or how do you really manage that? Yeah, um, well, we'll need to find another mid. So, um, you know, Connor, Connor's, Connor Blakely's been in the team. Darcy Tucker's been in the team. They've probably been more outside players. Um, we'll look to spin them maybe through the middle a little, little bit more to pick up a bit of the slack. Um, yeah, I mean, it's never easy to replace your better players um, and informed players, but um, we feel like we've got the personnel, personnel there that can do it. Is there frustration with how the tribunal has operated this year? Does it feel like it's been pretty uh, uh, not transparent? Uh, look, you know, like, um, all I can probably say is that I, I feel the frustration of our fans. And I know our fans are frustrated at Andy's one week penalty. And I understand that when they look at other incident, incidents that maybe get off or don't even get cited, I can understand their frustration. Do you feel like it needs, the whole system needs to be looked at? Oh, that's for um, probably people higher than me to, to um, have a view on. Uh, I think we should be always see, uh, searching for the most consistent outcomes we can. And um, at the moment, that's questionable. Uh, Sam Hill retired this week, um, he's had a frustrating couple of years. What, what's your reflections on, on his decision? Oh, well, um, the reflection on his decision is disappointing. Like it's, um, you know, I'd love to have him at full strength, uh, full fitness, um, playing his best footy because he's, he's realistically he's a young man, 31. For him to go through the injuries that he's been through over the last two, three years is just, um, yeah, taking its toll and um, it does wear you down. Um, when you, you, know, you put so much effort into coming back and then it happens again, time and time again. Um, but I just really want to, rem want to remember him for the great player he was. I, I think um, from the time he was drafted in his first, into his first nine years, he played 180, 190 games, which for a skinny kid that burst on the scene at West Perth was just a fantastic effort. Um, the other thing that you know, just I remember about Stephen is yeah, obviously his, his speed and silky skills, but he was the ultimate team player. Play anywhere, play any role for the team, um, and do anything required for the team to win. Um, he was one of our best tacklers and best defensive players, as well as being one of our best offensive players. Um, yeah, and he's, he's a great of our club. So, um, you know, he's not going to go out and be a keynote speaker anywhere, but I'd love him to be around the club and mingle with the players and, and pass some of his experiences on to our younger players. I know he's got tight relationships with um, Liam Henry and Sonny Walters and um, a number of our players. So I don't want him, I don't want him to go away from the club and, and um, you know, disappear. I want him to be around the club and pass on some of that stuff to, to all our players. So um, yeah, he's a great of, a great of the club. Is there a role there, Justin, already? Or is it something that you're just thinking about? I'm uh, just time? thinking about. Like, uh, yeah, he's, um, he's unsure of what he wants to do after footy. He's got a few things um, that he's been, um, yeah, um, trialling outside of, outside of footy. I don't think he wants to be in footy full time. I think he wants to get away, um, you know, spend time with his, his family. And I think after what he's gone through, you need to step away from the club and have a bit of time off just to refresh and get the energy back. And, um, yeah, we'll sit down later. Later, and he's, he, well, he's, he's, he'll have a role in our NGA as well. Um, you know, we, we've named one of our NGA um, groups after him, um, so his legacy will be there in, in that means. But yeah, we'd we'd like to keep him around the club. This last two weeks, is there for home and away season? Is there any sort of element of experimenting or trying new things? Not, not really, not really. Um, well, the thing is, we're, we're going to be pretty young. This weekend again, I think the last couple of weeks we've been you know, the youngest team in the comp. So when you're young, you just want, want to keep things pretty simple, um, allow players to play their normal roles and um, you don't want them overthinking and tinkering and throwing the, team, the magnets around because it can get a little bit 
um, they, can, they can lose their way a little bit. So, you know, we'll continue to try and play our footy and put our players in roles that they're comfortable with and allow them to just try and go out there and play to their strengths. David Bundy played um, deeply in the games record this week. Any running other things to say about him? Yeah, pretty much. It sounds like we're uh, yeah, <laughs> celebrating something every second week with Dave. Um, he's, uh, yeah, I've been mean, set it at his 350th. He's uh, great of our club and uh, he's you know, still at the top of his game. He still brings a lot of energy and um, a lot of leadership and obviously good play to our, our club. And yeah, I think that this weekend is just a sign of um, the dedication he's had to his craft. Um, to be involved in the game for so long is phenomenal. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's just a fantastic effort. And obviously you guys have just come out of quarantine, the Eagles are in quarantine at the moment. That's sort of being locked in your houses all week. Does that factor into performance in any way, do you believe? It does, absolutely it does. Um, because the thing that probably um, goes unnoticed is a lot of our players do things outside of the football club to prepare themselves week in, week out, whether it's you know, doing Pilates, extra recovery, off-site, all those sorts of things that they're unable to do when they're locked in, the, in their house. So uh, it's great this week, you know, players get to do their normal preps, they get a bit of freedom and able to be like normal people to some degree. And where he's at and yeah, he's, a, he's still a chance for next week. He's progressed really well uh, with that hamstring um, surgery. He's been pushing the, the, the medicos to um, go a bit quicker the whole time. He's been ahead of the curve and yeah, we're still hoping that next week he'll be available. And um, you mentioned that he might sort of come in and play for Peel or would he be in consideration for just seven training? <clears throat> uh, more than likely Peel. He's, uh, yeah, he's, it's been a long layoff. And um, it's not something we'd probably take too many risks with. So, yeah, he needs game time there probably. Well, on that quarantine issue, Justin, would you be comfortable bringing him that from the risk him to not having that waffle time? Well, it probably does make it a little bit harder. Yeah, um, not ruling him out by any stretch, but um, the fact that he hasn't played now for a couple of weeks um, probably doesn't set him up to succeed as well as we'd like. But, um, you know, we haven't got a lot of depth either, so we'll just yeah, weigh that up today at selection. Yeah, he's still, he's still in Adelaide. Yeah. Right, so you know, you put in the last few games, it's probably your priority, pretty on the set. Other states might call over a broken glass, the, the grand final will be held there, he sort of indicated that maybe WA wouldn't, would you urge him to call over a broken glass to get the grand final in the tournament? Well, I'm not sure we need to sell the house to, to get it here, but um, it does make a lot of sense. Uh, we've got a world-class stadium. We're a state of footy fans that would support a um, big occasion. So I don't see any reason why not. It's um, probably just getting the teams here, which would be a harder thing. And Justin, this, will there be a tribute for Stephen this weekend? Yeah, yeah, the club's yeah, going to send him out in the right way in that last home game, so, yep. And, and is Josh uh, back at the club and did you <coughs> Yep, he, he returned um, after we finished quarantine. And is there, has there been a sanction from the AFL or has one come to uh, I think that's still up in the air. Um, yeah, and it, it's in the courts as well. So we'll just let that run its case or run its, yeah.